today we are going to talk about uh, basic electrophoretic techniques to separate proteins and study proteins. So, what is electrophoresis? It is one of the powerful technique for protein separation and the separated proteins can be visualized after subsequent staining steps. It is based on the principle of migration of the charged proteins in the electrical field. As we have studied in the uh, last two lectures some basics of amino acids and proteins and then we moved on to study the proteins and proteomics. Uh, you have seen that you know now there is an emphasis on looking at thousands of proteins simultaneously. That is very relevant especially if you are looking at the complex biological problems because the proteins work in the interaction, they work as a part of signaling pathways. So, studying proteins together in totality becomes very crucial. So, there are many techniques which are evolving which aims to study proteins in very high throughput manner and they try to utilize protein properties to separate them well. One of such technique is known as two dimensional gel electrophoresis or 2 DE. 2 DE is a powerful electrophoretic separation technique that separates proteins in two directions. The isoelectric focusing which carries out in the first dimension and separate proteins on the basis of their unique isoelectric points. And then the LDS page which separates protein on the basis of their molecular weight and that is known as the second dimension separation. So, because we are utilizing two different properties of proteins in the first dimension isoelectric point and in the second dimension the SDS page this technique is known as two dimensional electrophoresis. So, if you want to do uh, ex an experiment based on two dimensional electrophoresis this kind of workflow can be followed. You have extracted the protein, you have done all kind of quality control checks to ensure that proteins does not have any contamination like you do not have nucleic acid contamination, carbohydrate or lipids as a part of the protein and the protein does not have even salt which may even interfere in, in your assays. Then you have to quantify the protein and once you know that you know now you got a decent clean protein with, with good concentration that protein is now ready for the further complex analysis. And now your intention is to separate those thousands of proteins uh, present in that mixture using two dimensional electrophoresis. So, to do that the very first step you will do isoelectric focusing in the first dimension. Then you want to prepare the strips to separate them uh, in the SDS page and to do that you are doing an equilibration of IPG strips. Then the uh, next step comes for the second dimension separation using SDS page. Then you want to visualize the gels using staining techniques and then you want to do the image analysis using various software and then those protein which looks interesting to you, you want to excise those and then identify them using mass spectrometry. So, this kind of a typical workflow. Uh, so, very first thing that you want to uh, look into which kind of immobilized pH gradient strips you can use for doing the protein separation. These are the uh, acrylamide based uh, you know, plastic strips on which the different pH buffers are coated and then they comes in different pH range. For example, it can be uh, pH 3 to 10, it can be uh, even 4 to 7 physiological range and they also come in different length. For example, you can uh, uh, always start with a smaller length of 7 centimeter, but for the actual experiment you can choose the large length of let us say 24 centimeter and then uh, you want your intention is to resolve the proteins on the large gels so that you have uh, good separation of various protein spots. So, these immobilized pH gradient strips they are very stable they are much more durable and because the gel is prepared with a plastic backbone that actually ensures that the pH gradient is fixed in the place. It provides high resolution and it has also improved lot of you know, reproducibility in different laboratory comparison which was one of the drawbacks in the earlier 2D technologies which were based on the tube gels. These IPG strips provide you you know good capacity for loading lot of proteins and therefore, now you are ready to separate proteins in the first dimension. But before you know you want to uh, when you are doing an experiment the very first step you want to do you want to take your protein in the solution form and you want to get it immobilized in the IPG strip or immobilized pH gradient strips. To do that your very first step is rehydration strip. So, you want to rehydrate the protein solution uh, onto IPG strip uh, in the overnight in a, a, a reswelling tray and that you can do either you know uh, using a passive rehydration method or you can do using an active rehydration method. So, in passive rehydration there is no voltage is applied 
whereas in case of active rehydration uh, you can apply the low voltage. Then after you know you have uh, put your protein solution you have added now the IPG strip and then you have uh, covered it with some mineral oils so that you know the proteins are uh, not solidifying on the edges and it is not getting evaporated. So, then overnight you are leaving it so that proteins slowly get uh, you know absorbed uh, in the IPG strip and then uh, the next day when you uh, want to start your first dimension separation then you are ready to do the isoelectric focusing. Let us also see some of these uh, details of doing uh, rehydration and IF in the animation form. Prior to isoelectric focusing in 2DE, the commercially available IPG strips must be rehydrated. This can be done either by passive rehydration or active rehydration. In passive rehydration, the IPG strip is placed with its gel side downwards in a well containing the protein sample reconstituted with a suitable buffer solution. This is then covered with mineral oil to prevent the gel from drying up and left overnight for 10 to 20 hours depending on the length of the strip. In active rehydration, the protein sample is added to the strip via a sample cup followed by cover fluid to prevent the gel from drying up. This is then placed in the isoelectric focusing instrument and low voltage is applied which allows the strip to take up the protein sample. Active rehydration is also performed for 10 to 20 hours depending upon the length of IPG strip being used. These loaded strips are then focused on an isoelectric focusing unit by passing current. The various proteins of the sample mixture migrate in the electric field and comes to rest when the pH is equal to their PI, that is, they become neutral and are no longer affected by the electric field. Progress of electrophoresis is monitored by means of a tracking dye, like bromophenol blue, BPB, which is a small molecule and therefore migrates ahead of all other proteins. So, uh, let us talk about isoelectric focusing. So, as we have studied in the uh, one of the earlier lectures that you know the amino acids have different side chains provides the positive and negative charge. So, proteins have overall net negative or positive charges and the pH determines the ionization states of these amino acids and therefore, the charge on the protein. So, isoelectric point is the pH at which the net charge on the protein is 0. So, when pH equals to pi there is no mobility of these uh, proteins and isoelectric focusing or the IEF uses this particular fundamental property to separate the proteins and depending on what kind of pH strip you are using you can separate either in the uh, pH range of 3 to 10 or 4 to 7. So, when you are running uh, proteins on SDS page gel when you want to separate only based on the molecular weight you want to you know boil the protein you want to denature the protein you want to separate the uh, denatured protein on SDS page gel. However, in case of uh, two dimensional electrophoresis uh, because you have started on the IPG strip. So, you cannot boil them. So, you have to prepare the IPG strip uh, before you load them onto the SDS page gel and that is done in a process known as equilibration. This is one of the conditioning step which you apply uh, so that the proteins which are separated by the IEF they are now prepared to be separated in the second dimension based on the molecular weight. So, the objectives of equilibrating these uh, proteins onto the IPG strip uh, are to coat the proteins with SDS for the separation which you use for the molecular weight basis. Then you want to also cleave the disulfide bonds which is inter or intra chain disulfide bonds and you want to also alkylate the sulfhydryl groups of the cysteine residues. 
So, let us look at the some of the recipe which is used for doing the equilibration. The first equilibration step involves addition of uh, DTT and that DTT uh, along with you know you are adding the SDS, you are adding the tris SCL and glycerol and in the second dimension you are adding the iodoestamide. Uh, this iodoestamide is going to prevent the protein reoxidation. So, whatever you have uh, denatured and uh, it you know those bonds should not be reformed again and these alkylates the residual DTT to minimize the vertical streaking as well. So, you have to perform both first and the second equilibration steps uh, and ideally you can do it you know a repeat process of that to ensure that you know your reduction and alkylation has happened properly. So, once the IPG strip you have already focused the protein based on the first dimension property and now you have also prepared the strip to be separated further based on the molecular weight. So, now you can use the second dimension protein separation property and that itself is a very you know interesting technology which is known as SDSPH, SDS polyacrylamide gel electrophoresis. So, the proteins when they exhibit different molecular weights uh, depending on the amino acid composition, this property can be utilized to separate the proteins using SDSPH gel. And this electrophoretic method which is SDSPH is aiming to separate the proteins based on their molecular weight. So, now whatever we have a separate proteins based on the uh, PI values they are going to get further separated based on the molecular weight. So, this page is one of the widely used electrophoretic technique it separate proteins according to their size. Uh, the uh, detergent SDS sodium rhodocyl sulphate is negatively charged. Uh, so, uh, in case of if you are just directly separating proteins on the SDS page gel you can simply boil the protein in SDS and beta mercaprethanol. In case of 2D electrophoresis you are going to prepare the IPG strip with the equilibration steps after uh, reduction and alkylation steps now those IPG strips are ready to be separated further on the second dimension SDS page. Just kind of you know brief about SDS page some of the chemicals which you use to make the gels uh, what is the role of each of these components for example, acrylamide it is uh, providing the matrix, bisacrylamide is a cross linking agent, uh, ammonium persulfate or APS it initiates the polymerization process, the SDS is a negatively charged detergent uh, which makes the protein rod shape and negatively charged and then beta mercaprothenol it breaks the disulfide bonds. So, some of these chemicals are uh, used for the SDS pH process I think it is a good idea for you to know the role of them and how they work uh, in the uh, per while performing the SDS pH gel. So, you have started with your protein immobilized uh, using in the rehydration process onto IPG strip. You have done the first dimension separation using uh, isoelectric point, equilibrated the strips to prepare them and now you have separated proteins in the SDS page gel based on the their molecular weight properties. So, far everything whatever you are doing it is all on the transparent gel. You have literally no idea that what can be seen on those gels and what you have separated until unless you are adding some staining reagents which can visualize the gels. So, therefore, different type of staining uh, reagents becomes very important. Uh, the most commonly uh, used uh, uh, staining reagent is Comasi Brilliant Blue, but you can also use uh, you know, silver staining, you can use different sensitive dyes like Cypro rubies and uh, even if you are looking at some modification at the PTM level, you can use even Pro-Q diamond or you can uh, look at for very sensitive detection, you can use even cyanine dyes. Let us watch the following animation to understand this concept better. The IPG strip is equilibrated in a reducing agent like DTT followed by an alkylating agent iodoacetamide which prevents reformation of the reduced bonds. This strip containing the separated proteins is then placed on the SDS polyacrylamide gel slab and subjected to SDS page by applying a direct current between 100 to 350 volts depending upon the size of the gel. Any proteins that may have been present as a single band on the IPG strip due to similar isoelectric points can now be separated on the basis of the molecular weight with smaller proteins migrating farthest. View of a sample 2DE gel which has been stained with Kumasi blue. Each spot provides 
information about the molecular weight and isoelectric point of the proteins. So broadly, you know, talking about two-dimensional electrophoresis, uh, the very first uh, part you did, the first dimension separation in the isoelectric focusing, when you are looking at, you know, there is a uh, uh, pH equal to pi, then there is no net charge and proteins are separated based on that depending on what IPG strip you have used. Then in the second dimension, uh, we separated protein further in the SDS page uh, based on their molecular weight property and proteins are migrating based on their size. So, this kind of you know technology of two dimensional electrophoresis could be used for uh, studying the differential protein analysis. Uh, and, and that is you know widely used for many applications, you know a lot of biological applications have used two dimensional electrophoresis to separate thousands of proteins on the gel and then they have compared a condition A with condition B. For example, you know healthy individuals with a diseased individual, so you first want to separate the proteins uh, from these you know two populations, you want to solubilize the proteins, you want to separate them on the uh, you know IPG strips. Then after doing the equilibration step, you want to separate them on the second dimension as shown on the schematic on the screen. Then you are staining them with one of the staining reagents and after staining then you can start visualizing you know thousands of spot on the gel and then the analysis becomes very crucial, the automation in the software and the you know our capability for data analysis becomes very you know critical here because you want to now pick up the differential protein responses or a few very unique proteins which might have emerged in a disease condition. So, you want to pick up those interesting proteins and now from the gel you can simply excise those protein spots which are based on the 2D uh, separation. So, once you have excised the uh, proteins of interest which is the spot you are seeing on the gel and then we can further process that you know with some enzymes like trypsin uh, which convert the protein to the peptide forms and then we can further analyze them using mass spectrometry to identify the proteins. So, today we have tried to learn about some of the basic electrophoretic techniques uh, for the protein separation and we have mainly studied the workflow of two dimensional electrophoresis which is one of the interesting simple but very elegant technology which can separate thousands of protein. Of course, it becomes you know little uh, challenging when you we talk about clinical samples because you have you know large number of samples to be analyzed from the control versus test conditions and that is where you know it, it you know some there are some limitation which people start encountering. So, then as a part of 2D electrophoresis, I also try to you know, uh, brief you about the SDS page uh, gels which is separating proteins on the molecular weight basis. So, by now you have uh, got good concept of uh, how two dimensional electrophoresis can be performed. Let us start a laboratory demonstration session where my TS will show you the various steps involved in performing 2D electrophoresis it's starting from uh, rehydration, then doing isoelectric focusing, equilibration steps and performing the second dimension separation. So, let us start the SDS page lab demonstration session now. Hello, I am Shalini, I am a TA of this course. So, today we are going to learn how to make SDS gel and how to cast it and then how to run it. So, first of all I would like to explain about SDS. So, that is a technique using which we can separate all the proteins on the basis of its mass. So, these are some buffers which we which we will require like one is 1.5 molar tris buffer solution of 6.8 pH, other one is tris buffer and that is 8.8 pH, the other is 10 percent SGS solution, this is 30 percent acrylamide and bisacrylamide solution, here it is timid and here it is APS. So, all these three are required to be stored at 4 degree Celsius because these are very sensitive. So, we have already taken helicots of it and will store it. This is glass slide which is having spacers, this is called thick plate and this is called thin plate which is separated by these spacers and here you can see it is mentioned 1.0 mm which is the space between these two plates. This is the comb which allow us to make the wells and where we put the sample, we load the sample in this. So, this is the casting unit and this is the casting stand. Here, this is the dummy plate which we use if we are running single gel. Now, I will tell how to assemble these two plates in the casting unit. So, first of all we have to hold these plate like this, 
now we have to place it on the floor so that both are on the same level now we have to place it inside this unit as you can see now it's done so we have to lock it at its position and we can place it here in the casting unit now to check the leakage we have to pour some water so that we can see whether it's leaking or not so we can fill it up to half the level and we can leave it for some time to check whether it's leaking or it's okay so after ensuring that the setup is not leaking the water which we had added to it is not leaking we had removed the water and now we'll make the resolving gel which will help us in resolving the bands according to their molecular weight so this is the composition in which we have to add tris chloride ph 8.8 distilled water 10% sgs 10% aps 30% acrylamide bisacrylamide solution and timid out of these solutions 10% aps and timid are very sensitive to temperature and light so they are kept covered with aluminum foil as you can see this is aps and timid and it is to be removed from fridge just before the experiment to be started before you want to cast the gel so here we have added everything except timid and aps so i'll add it first i'm adding aps that is 50 microliter for one gel that is now i am adding timid that is 2 microliter it so it starts solidifying fast so we have to mix it properly and then we have to start loading in the gel setup you have to fill it up to this level here you can see there is a level so you can fill up to this and then you can add water to remove all water or isopropanol to remove any bubble which is present here up to this green line till the time we have left this gel to get solidified we'll start making the stacking gel which composition of which is given here as we can see here stacking gel everything is same except the ph of the tris chloride solution which we are using here in the stacking gel is 6.8 unlike in the resolving gel where it was 8.8 as you can see here now the gel is casted and the comb is placed for easier visibility we have also marked the wells which are formed by using the comb now we have to remove it from here and we have to use this gel run unit which is having electrodes in it now we have to place it in such a way that the well are inside facing inside so carefully place it here and now as we are running only one gel we need a dummy plate which will go on the other side of the gel running unit now we have to close it now this is sealed now we have to transfer this whole unit in the buffer tank which is having 1x sgs running buffer as you can see here there is a red marking and here there is a black marking so we have to place it in such a way that red comes along the side of red now the setup is complete and we have to pour some more buffer inside this running unit so now this is 1x sgs running buffer we have to add this in the unit and now it is 
you can see it is filled up to the brim now we can remove the comb from here and now you can see the wells are made now we have to prepare the samples and for preparing the sample we have already taken s1 and s2 that is sample 1 and sample 2 10 microliter each now in this we have to add 5x sgs loading dye which looks like this it contains sgs and beta mercaptoethanol mainly and now we are placing it here at 95 degrees celsius for 5 to 10 minutes for the sample preparation now the samples are heated up and now we can keep it for some time for cooling down and after cooling down we can start loading the samples as they are prepared so this is sample 1 and now as you can see it's very difficult to see the lanes so we can use this for guiding where the wells are as you can see the dye is getting settled down in the well and the well is clearly visible now similarly we will change the tip now and we will load the second sample Now the loading is done, we can remove this and now we have to start running the gel. So just remember red color goes with red and black color goes with black. Now we can close it. Now from here we can set it for manual 90 volt till the time it is getting stacked and after that when it is stacked we can shift it we, we can switch it to 120 volts so now we'll start running the gel bubbles can be seen from here that means the gel has started running after the gel is run then we have to stain and de-stain the gel to see the bands which are separated on the basis of mass using SGS gel for staining we have placed it in a plastic plate as you can see here the gel is there and we have added Komasi blue and we will keep it for approximately 2 to 3 hours for getting stained and after staining it we have to add the de-stain to it and after de-staining for 2 to 3 hours again gel looks something like this as we can see bands are separated on the basis of their mass that's all for the SGS page thank you hello everyone today we'll discuss the overall workflow of 2d 2d and dyes are very important and powerful gel based proteomic approaches and both of them they separate proteins on the basis of isoelectric point and molecular weight so as you all have studied the overall workflow of one dimensional gel electrophoresis, the SDS page method, dyes is a step ahead of SDS page. So SDS page separates proteins only on the basis of molecular weight, 2D and dyes on the other hand, they separate proteins on the basis of both isoelectric point and molecular weight. So one may wonder what is isoelectric point. So all the proteins they have a particular uh, pH value at which their net charge is zero. So at isoelectric point of a protein which may vary from 2 to 7, the overall charge on the protein is zero. So at that point of time, the proteins they have least mobility. So if we have introduced proteins in an electric field, so when they reach up to a pH value which matches with their isoelectric point, 
their overall charge will be zero and they will not move any further they'll just stop there so that is the principle that we exploit in 2d so as the name suggests separation happens in two dimension the first dimension is known as isoelectric focusing and the second dimension is known as sts page so first we'll see how isoelectric focusing works so we have commercially available ipg strips so ipg strips they are available in various forms so in this particular case this ipg strip this has a ph range of 4 to 7 and it is 13 cm in length so we have ipg strips which have higher length or they have different ph range like 7 to 10 or 3 to 10 depending on your sample and what you want to see so what we'll do is first we'll take the ipg strip and we'll add a protein solution so ipg strip they're commercially available in a plastic with a plastic film so that the the strip is protected so first what we'll do is this is a tray we'll add a protein sample on top of that we'll add our ipg strip and the first step rehydration will happen for overnight so that helps our ipg strip to rehydrate and it will absorb all the protein sample so this is our protein sample it has all the necessary components our protein is there urea is there we have rehydration buffer and we've also added bromophenol blue which will just help in the visualization so i'll take the sample I'll add in one of these lanes Sample volume again depends on the overall pH on the overall IPG strip length So I'll just make sure that there are no bubbles and the sample is spread uniformly Now I will take the IPG strip This is how the IPG strip looks like You can see There are two ends, positive and a negative end Each IPG strip has a barcode You can also see there is a pH range mentioned on it, 4 to 7 so what I'll do is, I'll remove the plastic film, the protective plastic film and I'll keep the gel side. So the gel side is being protected by the plastic film and I'll keep the IPG strip on this tray in a way that the gel is facing the sample. Okay. So I'll remove the plastic film. So this is the gel side So I have kept the gel side on top of the sample So I will move my IPG strip a little Only to uh, at the ends I can touch with the forcep Because otherwise the IPG strip it has pH gradients across So I don't want to disturb the pH gradient I will just move it a little so that the sample is spread uniformly there is no air bubble so this is first the rehydration step now this will go on for 16 to 18 hours we'll also add mineral oil so that the strip does not dry up So now we have completed the first step of the 2D uh, procedure which is the rehydration. So this will go on for 16 to 18 hours. So this is the IEF unit in which we will carry out separation in the first dimension. So as you can see we have positive and negative end in this unit. So now we will add our tray. On this tray, we will add our IPG strip. So now we are placing our IPG strip. Again, we have placed our strip in a way that the positive end of the IPG strip is facing towards the positive end of the unit and the negative end towards the negative end of the unit. Now we will start the isoelectric focusing. We have also added paper wicks. 
which will soak any salt or all the oils in the sample and help in the proper flow of current. So now we'll also add electrodes at both the ends. So electrodes are same for both the ends. And then we'll start the isoelectric focusing program, which will go on for 15 to 16 hours. So as you can see, these are the various uh, voltage run parameters. Initially, we keep the voltage at 200 volts for 4 hours, which we then increase to 500 volts, further to 1000, and from 1000, there's a gradient increase. And at 8000 volts, we keep it for 64,000 volt hours. So this will ensure that a proper IEF run has been achieved. And uh, this is an example where there was some problem in the sample and I proper IEF run could not be achieved. You can see this declining red line. It can be because there are any salts or any other components which are interfering. So sample preparation again plays a very crucial role in having a proper separation of proteins in IEF. As you may have already seen that in 1D SDS page we add sample buffer which then breaks all the tertiary interactions within a protein. So in this case also, the step is known as equilibration, which just prepares a sample for its separation in second dimension. So equilibration solution, they have different components. Again, like uh, urea, they have uh, DTT is there in equilibration solution one. So DTT will cleave off all the disulfide bonds. So proteins will have a globular structure. So DTT will ensure that all the different uh, polypeptide chains which are joined together by disulfide bonds, they are broken. And then we'll create our uh, IPG strip with equilibration solution 2, which has all the same components as equilibration solution 1, but the only difference lies is, is that it has IAA, idoacetamide, whereas equilibration solution 1 has DTT. So idoacetamide will add a methyl group and ensure that the disulfide bonds which are broken by DTT, they do not renature back. So we have our strip here, as you can see. We'll first incubate it with equilibration solution one. I'll take my IPG strip and I'll keep it with the equilibration solution 1. I'll also dap it a little so that whatever oil is there will go off. So in the first rehydration step, we had kept the IPG strip in a way that the gel side was facing downwards. But from IEF onwards, we'll keep it in a way that the gel side is facing upwards because proteins have already separated on the gel, on the gel strip and we do not want them to get disturbed. So we'll make sure that the gel side is always upwards. So we'll incubate it for 15 minutes. Generally, we do it using a shaker so that the solution A is in constant touch with our IPG strip. So once incubation with solution A is over, then we'll add solution B. Again, we'll incubate the strip for 15 minutes under shaking conditions. So this is our cassette for uh, SDS page. We have added plates in this. This you can see is a big plate as compared to the regular size, small size plates which we use for normal SDS page. We have added our IPG strip here. So you can see on this strip, the proteins have already separated according to their isoelectric point. The strip has different pH ranges and proteins, they have migrated, they have traveled during the IEF run and wherever they found their iso, they found a pH value which matches with their isoelectric point, they stop moving. So their mobility stop. So proteins, you will find it all across the strip. Now the separation 
is going to happen vertically. Earlier the separation happened horizontally, now the proteins will move according to their molecular weight. So this is the cassette, we have added our IPG strip, we have also added some agarose solution to seal it so that the strip does not move here and there and it is static. So we will then just assemble it. and then we will keep it in the 2D apparatus. Now we are keeping our cassette in the electrophoretic unit. Now we will add the STS buffer and the run will go for around 3 to 4 hours. So once the run is complete, we will again stain our gel the way we do for normal STS page gels. We will then de-stain and then this image is one of the representative images which uh, you will see after you have de-stained your gel. You can see there are multiple spots on this image and then later you have to annotate these spots using various softwares and identify your protein of interest. So I hope you had a good a view of uh, processes involved in performing 2D electrophoresis. You have seen there are multiple steps involved and which makes you know the process a little tedious but if you have done everything meticulously then probably you can see some beautiful spots which are separated on the gel and those gel images reflect your hard work, your efforts which have been putting to know the protocol, the science, the all the steps involved in doing good experiment. And each spot actually reflects what is the isoelectric point, what is the molecular weight of a given protein. So I hope now you have a much confident understanding of performing 2D gel based, gel based proteomics experiment. In the continuing lecture, we are going to discuss about some of the, the pros and cons of using 2D electrophoresis and how it can be made more robust and more quantitative for various other applications. So let us continue the discussion on technologies in the next lecture.